Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. What a pleasure to see all of you here in person. What a pleasure to be with all of you who are here with us online. I'm Rabbi Samuel Kay. I'm with our amazing cantorial soloist, Lindy Rivers. And I am with all of you to spend Shabbat together. What a joy and what a blessing it is to spend this beautiful week and this beautiful time together. Uh, you know, it has been, I would say, a very interesting day in Canada. Is that fair? Uh, yeah, I, don't, I don't know how many of you suddenly, inexplicably lost access to uh, almost all of the amenities of the modern world today, but it was almost as if Shabbat was coming in Jerusalem style just a little bit early. A little lack of internet, a little lack of telephone. Um, Shabbat when we least expect it. But you know, that is something amazing about Shabbat is that it comes exactly when we do expect it. We have the ability to plan for it. And that feeling of being... Um, a drift um, is something that we can plan for, something that we do anticipate, something that we can bring into our lives. And so, uh, let's leave the Friday of no technology behind a little bit and enter into the Friday of no technology when we're expecting it, the Friday of being focused in the moment, the Friday of taking a deep breath, the Friday of putting aside the phone and the screen, unless, of course, you're watching us from home, in which case, please don't turn it off. And all those. If you're lucky enough to be watching. If you're lucky enough to be watching at home, of course. <laughs> Thank you. It's working. <laughs> um, and instead, let us join our voices, our spirits, and our songs together as we spend Shabbat in this place, in this time, and in this moment. Yadid Nefesh begins on page 105. Shabbat candles. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Janet and Michael. We're going to have you light these Shabbat candles. And of course, we have over here set up Shabbat candles for the community. And so if you are in the mood to light tonight, if you are in the mood to mark this sacred time, if this is perhaps your first time back home at Holy Blossom in a little while, or if you are just in need of that little bit of extra Shabbat feeling, please do come join us over here uh, and light candles with us as a community. Thank you for being our Nachshans. Baruch atah anai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kijanu mitzvotav v'tzivanu l'hadlik nefesh shel Shabbat. Baruch atah Adonai. Shell 
Play to the eternal with lyre and the voice of song. teaching I especially love about Lachadodi, um, which offers up that the going out into the field, the going out to receive the Sabbath bride, can also be understood as going out to receive an extra share of soul, an extra little bit of spirit, an extra feeling of special holiness. And one of the commentators who says that this is possible then asks a very good question. Well, where does that extra little bit of soul comes from? If I'm going to be getting an extra little bit of soul, whose soul is that? And the answer, of course, is, 
Well, this is one of the things that we mean when we talk about the merit of our ancestors. The merit of our ancestors, the, uh, the, the merit of our ancestors is not just something that we get to invoke in times of need. The merit of our ancestors is something that comes to us on Shabbat. It lives within us and it lives alongside of us. And so with that beautiful thought in mind that we are not alone singing these words, inviting in the Shabbat bride, but we are alongside every single Jew who has ever been with us and who has ever said these words, and that a piece of them sits inside of us as we say these words. We will turn to L'Chadodi, which can be found on page 115.
turn to page 119, and we rise for the words of the Baruch Hu. El Chai Vekayam, Tamid im Loch Alenu Leolam Vaed, Baruch Ata Arunai, Hama Ariv Aravim. All this 
we hold to be true and sure. You alone are our God, there is none else, and we are Israel, your people. You are our sovereign, you deliver us from the hands of oppressors, save us from the fists of tyrants. You do wonders without number, those beyond understanding. You give us our life, and by your help we survive all who seek our destruction. You did wonders for us in the land of Egypt, miracles and marvels in the land of Pharaoh. You let our people Israel out forever to serve you in freedom. When your children witnessed your power, they extolled you, they gave you thanks, and willingly they enthroned you. Full of joy, Moses, Miriam, and all Israel sang this song. Together we read, Grant that we may lie down in peace, Adonai our God, and raise us up, O Sovereign, to life renewed. Spread over us the shelter of your peace, guide us with your good counsel, and for your name's sake be our help. Shield us from hatred and plague, keep us from war and famine and anguish, Subdue our inclination to evil. O God, our guardian and our helper, our gracious, merciful sovereign, give us refuge in the shadow of your wings. Guard our coming and our going. Now and always we may have life and peace. Praised are you, Adonai, whose shelter of peace is spread over us, over all of your people, Israel and over Jerusalem. Shabbat La sot et ha Shabbat Le Hey. 
We continue with the meditations of our heart and the words of our tradition from now until page 136.
Shalom Ra, Ayin Shoel Amcha, Tassim Le'olam. Shalom Ra, Ayin Shoel Amcha, Tassim Le'olam. Tassim Le'olam. Tassim. As a community, and has, has become our tradition, we acknowledge the lands on which we live and the people who were here, living and caring for the spirit of this land and its inhabitants before us. Our sacred spaces, including this one, are hosted on the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Haudenosaunee, the Ojibwe Chippewa, and the Huron-Wendat peoples. Under the dish with one spoon and the two-row wampum belt covenant, Many indigenous nations agreed to peaceably share and care for this land and welcomed others to do the same. This land is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Métis people from across Turtle Island. And while Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit, we acknowledge that not all treaties were made between peoples of equal power or intentions to honor them. We vow not to forget the indigenous communities and as we turn our hearts towards them, we turn also our hearts towards truth, reconciliation, and healing for our community and for the communities around us. This evening, our Holy Blossom Temple community prays for the healing of Johanna Falk, Hannah Bat Gitel, Sarah Leah Bat Moisha, Mayor of Naomi, Miriam Bat Benjamin the Sarah Leah, Freja Marmer, Joel Sears, Levi Gross, Sima Bat Chaim Vachai Sarah. Gittel Yaakova Bat Shmuel Vesara, Daniel Ben Baruch Veresa, David Sandler, Rabbi Dove Marmer, and Samantha Tylee Bader. If you'd like to share the name of someone who we, you are praying for their healing this evening so that we may include them in our prayers with you, we invite you to do so at this time. I used the phrase Bubamisa today while chatting with a brand new acquaintance. And they, like some of you, just gave me a puzzled look. A what? A Bubamisa, you know, a grandmother's story, a tall tale. If you make three love matches happen, you get a space in the world to come. If your ears turn red, suddenly it means someone's speaking Lashon Hara about you. If you hold the Havdalah candle just a little bit higher, it'll mean you'll grow. They're uh, little wisdoms that have little to no common sense or basis. And yet the years go by and we never seem to shake them. There's actually a few very specific ones of these in my life. Uh, for instance, I say the Shema constantly while I'm flying, when we're taking off or whether we're landing. If I am awake, I am saying the Shema. And it's not because I think, well, maybe if I don't say the Shema, the wings will fall off the plane, but why take the risk? 
It's worked so far. Uh, similarly, my beloved mother-in-law will call out to the angel Michael whenever she loses something, and she's always trying to get me in on that ritual. Another one, one of my chavrutas told me that her rabbi's mother told her once that if you open up the chumash blind and you point to a single word, that word has something to do with your besheret. And finally, uh, possibly my favorite, one of my friends and roommates in Jerusalem refused to ever walk past a burnt out building on Shabbat, not because it was dangerous, but because, and this is the quote, if there's going to be a demon, it's going to be in there. Superstitions, Dobomysis. Our reform ancestors, the founders of our movement who lived during the 19th and early 20th century, did not care for such superstitious, folksy line of thinking. To them, Judaism was an ethical philosophy rooted in logic. Judaism's great light, which one day all the nations of the world would see, was that we are an ethical, logical people capable of explaining the world without silly ritual or an old world mysticism. Theirs was a rationalist emancipation stemming from all things can be discovered, which was the zeitgeist of the time, and rooted, of course, ever in the philosophical prophetic call of morality in the Torah. That vision of Reform Judaism excised and altered things which had been long-standing ritual. The resurrection of the dead, for instance, was abandoned instead looking towards the perfection and immortality of the human soul. Angels and an invisible world were dismissed as primitive perspective, which could be explained only now through science and logic. As I'm sure many of you know, kashrut and ritual items were put aside so that the Jew could be, quote, a gentleman in the street. And my favorite, perhaps most famously, our early reformers also changed their perspective on where we should turn our hearts or our centering inside of the Jewish world. We no longer needed to turn east towards Jerusalem, and we never needed to really talk about the land of Israel. Since after all, the new Jerusalem, the new Israel was this, the new world, a place completely full of bubamices. And if you think I'm making it up, just take a look at our sanctuary, which of course is not built facing towards Jerusalem. This week, we read Parshat Chukat, a rich, diverse Torah portion which opens up with the description of the para aduma, the red cow, the red heifer. It is a challenging, odd ritual firmly rooted in cult, the priestly definition of purity and duty and sacrifice. The red heifer is strange, though. It's necessary. It removes the impurity of death so that people can serve in the temple but the way it does so is odd. It takes seven pure priests, each of whom need to become impure, while slaughtering an animal so rare that some scholars genuinely believe that we have mistranslated the very verse. How can purity come forth from a ritual which causes impurity? How can a necessary ritual that you need to perform constantly require a nearly mythical creature. It is fact, seems to make no sense. And our Midrashic tra tradition is aware of it, saying, who could possibly cause purity to come from the impure? Only the one who caused Abraham to come forth from Terach and the next world to come forward from this one. It is the one who commands so, the one who decrees so. It can only be the one, the singular, the only. It is, on a technical level, a chukat, one of the laws of God which is utterly, completely, and totally unknowable. There's no wisdom to it, there's no logic to it, there's no sense to it. It is simply put, a law. And Rabbi Joshua teaches in the name of his master, Rabbi Levi, that it is one of four such things, and whenever we study them, this is the best part, the evil inclination is right there very excited to remind us about how irrational and contradictory these commandments are. Even the ancient rabbis of the Talmud didn't understand how such a chukat could possibly exist. So why then is it still something that we learn about, read about, and center so firmly in our faith? Our reform ancestors believed that this was a relic for another time, 
and you treated it like any valuable relic, put it into a museum, study it, date it, leave it be. Spend your time on the things that matter, the things which explain the world, the things that make the world a better place. And while I admire their revolutionary zeal, I do admit that I find myself split. There are days when my faith is made stronger thanks to our classical reform tradition, when we weave in history and anthropology and philosophy. And there are days when I need the mystery and I need the unknowable and I need the certainty of the rabbis. There are days when everything is spinning and swaying, and it actually comforts me very much to know that there is simply something immovable in the center. And while there's no reason to think that I or any other human being can ever comprehend it, I take comfort in knowing that it exists, it has existed, and it will continue to exist, unchanging and unchanged. And if you think that this is a strange thing, I would argue that this is actually one of the truths of the world. Sometimes we are stronger and brighter and more effective when we understand the essential truth of a thing, having turned it and turned it over again and dissected it. And sometimes our truths are best when they are simply accepted. I do not need to know the reason, biological or sociological, that I loved my tiny screaming daughter from the moment that I first laid eyes on her, the moment she was born. For me, it is simply a chok of the world. I do not need psychological or political logic to know why I feel a certain way the moment my feet land in Jerusalem. It is simply a chok of the world. And at times when I look at the inexplicable happening all around me, love and light, death and pain. I do not necessarily need to interrogate it with logic and explanation. Sometimes I simply need to know that there is a truth in the world. Two stories from rabbis I deeply respect. The first from Rabbi Rachel Miller, and she knows I often quote her on this. I think it gives her some pleasure. She says, I do not believe in God that is either Avinu nor Malkenu. Neither father, nor king, nor male, nor dominant. I believe in a complicated God, a complex God rooted in years of Jewish study and synthesized with modern philosophy. And, and for 10 days a year, I put that all aside. And I join myself to the untold generations of Jews who have bowed before the open ark. And for 10 days, I believe in Avinu Malkenu with a full heart. And if that's not to your flavor, the second one is from a rabbi who is no stranger to these halls, Rabbi Dr. David Ellenson, former president of the Hebrew Union College. And Rabbi Ellenson shared this story with my wife Taylor when she was one of his students about how there was a day when he was sitting with another very respected rabbi from the Reconstructionist movement. And this Reconstructionist rabbi had just finished authoring the Reconstructionist prayer book. And Rabbi Ellenson's son was sick. And his friend, who was sitting by him, turned to him and asked him if he wanted to pray. And in this moment, these two rabbis, one who is the inheritor of the reform tradition, the foremost reform rabbi in the world, steeped in logic, steeped in the rejection of the illogical, and the other one who has literally just finished writing the prayer book that believes only in a God as a principle of morality and never as a being who acts in history, they both prayed for healing. As Rabbi Ellenson said, why don't we pray to the kind of God that neither of us believe in and perhaps he will heal my child. Our Torah portion this week offers up a moment of the ancient it is a moment of the ancient which is impossible, illogical, and inexplainable. And there are weeks that this does not actually need to be a challenge. There are weeks instead that this can be a comfort. There are weeks that we need logic, 
and reason and answers. And there are weeks when we simply need to know that there is a truth and that we are not alone. May this week be such for those in need. Shabbat Shalom. We begin the conclusion of our service with the words of Alenu, page 139. Please rise. Alenu le shabbat adon hakol la take du la liot sebre sheet shelo asanu ki goyeha ratzot velo samanu kemishpahot adama shelo sam helkenu kahem. Vikor alenu kifu hamonam, va anachnu kurim, umishtahavim umodim, lifne melech, malche hamlachim, hakadush baruchu, shehuno teshamayim viyoset aretz, umashav yakoro, pashamayim imal, ushrinotu zo, ushrinotu zo, vigafe. We turn now to sacred memory, and we invite the mourners amongst us to rise, whether you are marking a yard site or remembering a loved one who has died within the year. As a community, Today, we mark the yard site of the following. Rebecca Banks, Paul Bell, Carol Braun, Benjamin Bregman, Harry Burston, Milton Cadsby, Fanny, Fanny Khordakov, Mark Cohen, Martin J. Cohen, Mo Cole, James Cooper, Nathan Dan, Lloyd Davidson, Helen Eckstein, Rose, fin Rose Feinstein, Jeanette Freeman, Max Fromovitz, Fanny Galfand, Max Goldfarb, Albert Goldman, Kurt Gonsenhauser, Ruth Goodman, Mortimer Goodman, Max Grossman, Mitchell Kohan, Israel Linzen, Lily London, Arthur London, Archie Malich, Diana Morgulis, Edith Pentern, Sylvia Pulver, Luba Richardson, Shir Shilly Rosen, Fritz Rothschild, Irving Schachter, Margaret Selman, Benjamin Schechter, Isaac Schlesser, Rose Soberman, Barry Spiegel, Ralph Sternberg, Claire Sweet, Ernst Weinberg, Joseph Weinstein, Henry Weinstein, Arthur Witkin, Regina Wolf, Hyman Zach. And we recall the memories of Irving Abella, Susan Chaitin, Fern Dater, Max Eisen, Veronica Mandel, Valerie Packer, Leah Plum Papernick, Peter Samu, Charles Tabachnik, and Barry Zelico, who are currently observing Shloshim. If you would like to add a name to our remembrance or repronounce a name, I invite you to do so at this time. Zichonam <laughs> Nivracha. May their memories be an eternal blessing. We rise as one community to recite Kaddish Yatom and praise God's holy name. Yitkadal vid Kadash Rabba. Amen. Bialma divra chirute, Vyamlich malchute. 
בחייכון וביומכון ובחיי דכל בית ישראל, בעגלה ובזמן קריב ואמרו אמן. יהי שמי רבה מבורך לעולם ולעולמי עומיה. יתברך וישתבח ויתפאר ויתרומם ויתנשא ויתהדר ויתעלה ויתהלל שמי דקודשה בריחו לאלה מן כל ברכתה ושירתה תושבחתה ונחמתה דאמירן באומה ואמרו אמן יהי שלמה רבה מן שמיא וחיים עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואמרו אמן עושה שלום במרומיו הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל, ואמרו אמן. May the source of peace and peace to all who mourn, comfort to all who are bereaved, amongst us, our people Israel, and the nations of the world, and together we say, Amen. can be found on page 439. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam borei b'ri ha'gafen Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam asher kitshonu mitzvotav v'ratzav anu v'shabat kodsho v'yahava v'ratzon hin chilonu Zikaron lemaasei v'reishit Ki hu yom t'chilo Lemikroi kodesh Zeifer l'tziyat Mitzrayim Ki v'anu v'acharta V'yotanu kidashta Mikoho amim V'shabat Speaking of Baba Mises, does everyone remember? If you were here last week? Okay. So it shouldn't feel bad. So it doesn't feel bad. Three, two, one. Oh, what a beautiful challah. Three, two, one. Oh, what, what a beautiful, beautiful challah. Bar, I like this tradition. Baruch atah Adonai Elohim melech haolam ha-motzi lechem min haaretz Thank you, Jason. Beautifully done. Shabbat shalom. Shabbos.